Governor Saludo assures Indian Umbra of accelerated development in 2023. Anambra government expresses commitment towards restoration of the state's glory. Federal government to address post-harvest losses by farmers in Nigeria. Two persons killed, three others injured in occupied West Bank, Asia. Before the news in details, here is a special message. Governor Chukoma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Good morning and welcome to the news. My name is Nonye Mokoye. Happy New Year. Governor Choko Masaludo of Anambra State has assured that the year 2023 will usher in accelerated development and progress in Anambra State. The governor in release wished the Anambra a bountiful 2023 as he further assured that Anambra will continue to win from all fronts in spite of the daunting challenges. Governor Saludo noted that there is every reason to celebrate another promising new year and give God Almighty the glory, not only for preserving Indian Umbra to witness the new year, but more importantly for his mercy and grace for the modest achievements they have all recorded within the first nine months in office. He further said that as they reflect on 2022 and project a prosperous 2023, they have reasons to celebrate and modest, the modest achievements they have recorded individually and collectively as a state, despite the daunting challenges facing the nation. The governor expressed belief that the year 2023 will most certainly be a redefining year for Indian Umbra as a people, and it is his earnest desire that Anambra will continue to record more feats. It was a gathering of who is who in the state and beyond as the royal palace of the traditional ruler of Aba community in Njikoka local government area, Igwe Leonard Eze, for the celebration of his 80th birthday, 45 years on the throne, and 2022 of Fala Festival. A correspondent, Emmanuel Chibata, reports that event which displayed rich cultural heritage and tradition of Aba community attracted notable personalities, including the governor of Anambra State, Professor Choko Masoludo, his Edo State counterpart, Godwin Obaseki, former senator that represented Anambra Central, Ben Obi, all Progressive Grand Alliance Abga presidential candidate, Professor Peter Omadi, traditional ruler of Onicha, Igwe Nemeka Achebe, representing Njikoka and Ocha and Dunukofia at the Federal House of Representatives, Honorable Dozi Nwankwo, among others. The event offered opportunity for the traditional ruler to honor illustrious sons and daughters of the community for their contribution to the development of the town and society. Notable among the honorees is a globally renowned Nigerian writer and indigen of the community, Shimamanda Ngozi Adishie, who received the chieftaincy title of Odelowa. In his remark, Governor Soludo, who congratulated the traditional ruler and people of Aba community for the great milestone achieved, also felicitated with Chima Amanda Adishie on her chieftaincy title, noting that such honor given to her is well deserved and befitting. The governor emphasized the importance of recognizing people, including women, for their achievements while still alive, and urged other communities to emulate Abba, which he described as a great community. Example Abba. For example, I think all other communities in it really emulate. <laughs> In an address, the traditional ruler of the community, Igwe Eze, who appreciated God for sparing his life, thanked Abba community for support and cooperation since he ascended the throne, even as he commended Governor Soludo for efforts in making Anambra a livable state. 
The President General of Aba Town Union, Mr. Alexander Ekwagana, expressed the Town Union's delight in being part of the historic milestone. Speaking after the chieftaincy conferment, the renowned writer Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, who was visibly happy over the honor by her community, dedicated the chieftaincy honor to her late parents, whom she said raised her to be proud of her culture, adding that the honor will spur her to continue doing well and promoting the rich culture of Fundibo as is being done in her little very works. To be celebrated here today is very moving for me. I'm very happy. Um, I'm filled with joy and it also makes me want to continue to do well because I think that it's important to my career that I continue to represent them well. In separate interviews, the member representing Njiko Okatu constituency at the State House of Assembly, Honorable Pete Ibida, illustrious sons of the community, Chief Cosmas Agabo and Chief Andy Okeke, and another indigenous of the community and a senior advocate of Nigeria, Professor Joy Ezilo, felicitated with the traditional ruler and all who received chieftaincy titles at the 2022 Ofala Festival. Emmanuel Shibata for ABS News. Congratulations to our own Timamanda Adichie on a well-deserved honor. Now, Anambra State Government has assured that with the help of God, it will defy all odds and reposition the state for the benefit of the citizenry. The state deputy governor, Dr. Nyeka Chukuibezim, gave the assurance at his home church, St. Lawrence Anglican Church, Mbaoku, Oka South, local government area, during a special service marking the 25th ordination anniversary and send forth of Venerable Chukode Ezobi, the outgoing vicar of the parish. A government house correspondent, Emmanuel Okonko, tells us more. Governor Bezim said that the government of Professor Choma Soludo is making tireless efforts towards restoring the glory of the state, especially security-wise, calling for all hands to be on deck in that regard. Dr. Bezim, while commending the efforts of Venerable Ezobi in the vineyard of God since his ordination, called on religious leaders to always join hands with government in enthroning the desired society. And I know uh, we will all triumph, pass through this stage. A teaching program. I need not have an MSC or the capacity of MSC or begging me. So I'm begging me. Earlier in the sermon, the Archbishop, Ecclesiastical Province of the Niger, and Bishop of Oka Diocese, Most Reverend Alexander Bezim, while pointing out that suffering is an essential ingredient for spiritual and all-round development of every Christian, encouraged the faithful to endure challenges of life as it will make them great, assuring them that God will not fail them. While listing the numerous achievements of the outgoing vicar in the parish, Most Reverend Bezim advised many ministers of God to be strategic and visionary in order to overcome ministry challenges. That was what Paul was telling Timothy. As a good soldier, whenever it's time, be ready to suffer. That is one of the worst things that has happened to the gospel of our time. Every time you see people, you say, this our God is a good God. He's a good God. He's God of prosperity. God that will send you from ashes to glory. Everybody will be saying Amen. Pure nonsense. Suffering is an essential ingredient. As a child of God, when suffering comes, allow that suffering to come. God promised He will bring you out of that suffering but you will be a better child of God. Somebody say amen. Yeah. The celebrant, Venerable Ike Chuezo B, 
thanked God for showing him mercy since he started laboring in his vineyard, promising to continue to be faithful in his service to God and humanity, even as he encouraged members of St. Rollins to maximally support his successor to move the work of God forward. I am grateful to God because of his numerous blessings to me, both in spiritual development and in physical. God has in so many ways blessed me. He has blessed my ministry in Mbaoku. My consolation and my words of encouragement to his Lordship and our Archbishop is that to the new place I'm being posted, I promise to be totally submissive and I pray that God will continue to strengthen me. Some of the guests, including Sangora Etele, described Venerable Ezo B as a committed servant of God who has positively impacted many lives. From St. Lawrence Anglican Church, Mbuku, in Oka South Council area, I am Emmanuel Okonkwo, reporting for ABS News. As the year 2023 begins, Christians drew nearer to God with special church services to present themselves and rededicate life anew for the journey of the year. There was jubilations and thanksgiving unto Lord for his grace and mercies upon them all, all through last year and the opportunity to see 2023. Our correspondent, Amaka Chibuzo Okoye, has details. Archbishop, Ecclesiastical Province of the Niger, and Bishop Daosi Sofoka, Most Reverend Alexander Ibezimi, his sermon during the service, asked Christians to exercise faith amidst temptation, political instability, mass unemployment, and many other, noting that they should not give up, rather stand firm and focus on the word of God, which is their strong tower. Most Reverend Ibezimi helped on fervent prayers and dedication to the things of God, so as to be direct and right. In his message, the Bishop, Methodist Church of Nigeria, Diocese of Waka, Right Reverend Onyeka Chinwakama, said God assured them of restoration, reconciliation and healing of all sorts in the country, thereby giving them hope, deliverance and mercy. Right Reverend Wakama said God's mighty hands are upon the country and if they should turn back to him, all the challenges and difficulties encountered in the country will be a thing of the past, while advising that as they are into election year, that all should be wise in electing candidates that will bring change to the country. The chaplain of Chapel of the Healing Cross, Chuku Emeka Odumegu Ojuku University Teaching Hospital, Ama Akwoka, Reverend Edozie Chukwogo, said that as the year begins, they should not pay attention to things of the old as Christ has renewed all that concerns them. Reverend Chukwogo gave them hope of all round beginning and greater things as he said that Christ has come in his glory to reconcile them with their maker, forgive and give them abundant life. At the Divine Mercy Chaplaincy, Chuku Emeka Odumegu Ojuku, Juku University Teaching Hospital, Amako Oka, the chaplain, Reverend Father Justin Ezechuku, in his homely, said that faithfulness of God is so sufficient for them, having made them see this year. Therefore, they should discover their identity as children of God and pursue it for the purpose of God. Reverend Ezechuku encouraged the parishioners to allow the promises of God to prevail in their life and walk away from all false promises that will negate their life. Amaka Chibuzo Okoye, ABS News. In the spirit of celebrating the Yuletide, Success Active gives us a non-governmental organization which empowers the less privileged, have organized the get-together event and award to its benefactors, a correspondent, Kenechuku Chukode, completes the story. According to the founder of the group, Chief Ike Chuku Chukudi Ebube, the group has existed for 17 years, which he started small by helping people with their basic needs, but over time moved on to empowering people with skills and equipment to be self-reliant. Chief Ike Chuku emphasized that the group will keep expanding to different parts of Anambra according to the means available to it and advised people to always give without listening to the sentiment expressed by some people towards giving. I'm 
The special advisor to the governor of Anambra State on Youth Empowerment, Dr. Nelson Omenua, in a remark commended the group for all their effort towards lifting humanity and urged people in the spirit of youth tie to always share. <laughs> Emba representing Njikoka and Nyocha and Dunukofia Federal Constituency at the House of Representatives, Honorable Dozie Nwankwo, who graced the event, explained that giving is not an easy virtue and given the economic reality at hand, it's a difficult thing to do and appreciated the founder of the group for his efforts as he will always support them. To give at this point in time, you know, these are difficult. He has had some poverty in the land. Others who spoke at the event, including Mr. Peter Uzumba, Mr. Emeka Eze, and Mrs. Ifoma Okpala, all hoped that giving should be part of human existence as it brings about responsible living and attracts godly blessings. The event was attended by the Transition Committee Chairman of Unjikoka local government area, Mr. Clem Aguiyi, and host of other dignitaries as the event climaxed with presentation of awards to benefactors of the group from Enuguku, Njikoka local government area. It's been Kenetuku Chukwodi for EBS News. On the national scene, the federal government has said that over 30% of food produced in Nigeria every year is challenged by post-harvest losses due to a lack of storage facilities, transportation and lack of equipment. They addressed, uh, to address the problem of post-harvest losses being experienced by farmers, the federal government has a concession 17 uh, silos with 6,000 metric tons storage space to the private sector to enable farmers to have access to storage facilities. Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Dr. Muhammad Abubakar, who disclosed this at the second West and Central Africa Post-Harvest Congress and Exhibition 2022 with the theme, Upscaling and Promotion of African Indigenous Food to Global Standards in Abuja, said that the responsibility of government is to provide enabling environment for the private sector to drive the economy, adding that government is working to ensure that the food security in Nigeria and Africa is addressed. The minister, who was represented by the Director of Food and Strategic Reserve in the ministry, Dr. Haruna Suleiman, explained that the green aggregation centers would enable farmers to have access to be able to clean and dry their agricultural produce during harvest and to reduce post-harvest losses and also add value to whatever is being produced through these centers. The role of women in shaping the family and society for better has once again been emphasized. A correspondent, Kenechuko Chukode, reports that this came to the fore during the Oka Development Union Nigeria Adun Women's Wing Oli Nando Celebration. Olinando Celebration, which recognizes and celebrates Oka women who are 80 years and above and have made positive footprints in their families and society, started with the investiture of retired Justice Selene Mweke, the group's first President General, as its Grand Patron. In her remark, the President General, ADUN Women's Wing, Mrs. Oge Ekwazo, noted that the celebration, which was the second edition, was geared towards appreciating the elderly, especially mothers, who distinguish selves while also serving as an avenue for interaction between the old and young. Mrs. Ekwazo also thanked retired Justice Mweke and others for the solid foundation they laid for the progress and continuity of the group. There's no more respect. So if we can adopt our old mothers like this, when they do this, you know, it's a very good virtue. Why can't we 
pick it up, you know, emulate it and continue with that. You know, it is our duty. That's why, you know, okay? Mm -hmm. Before, in a gathering like this, you see them put on gowns, skirts, and they say, no, a woman is supposed to look very decent. Like we are doing in order today, for any function, happen like a woman and they look decent. So tomorrow, if the children, they will say, no, our mothers never did it this way. Let us continue. Our mothers, you know them, we are very decent people, you know, and we rebuke anything that is a thing that is not supposed to be. The chairman on the occasion, Dr. Emmanuel Nwobo, represented by his younger brother, Mr. Samuel Nwobo, affirmed that women are indispensable to the family and societal growth. <laughs> The grand patron, retired Justice Mweke, thanked God for helping her to pilot the affairs of the group during her early days despite the turbulence and appreciated the current leadership for keeping fit with the ideals of the group. Some of the Olinando celebrants, including Mrs. Wilfred Anekwe and Mrs. Esther Ekunife, thanked God and expressed their happiness for the honor, while also advising young women to be patient, understanding, and selfless in their marriages. <laughs> The event featured investiture proper, dance and music performances. In Oka, it's been Kenechuku Chokwodi for ABS News. Say congratulations to Oka women for organizing the Olinando celebration. Now, the Israeli army has killed two Palestinian men during a raid on a village near the city of Jenin in the northern occupied West Bank. Mohammed Samer Hoshir, 22, and Faud Mohammed Abed, 25, were shot dead early on Monday in Kovdan, northwest of Jenin. Uh, confrontations and armed clashes broke out with Israeli forces late on Sunday night after they raided Kof Dan to demolish the homes of two Palestinians killed in a shootout at an Isra Israeli military checkpoint in Jenin that led to the killing of an Israeli soldier, Bafala, several months ago. Israeli forces said in a statement on Sunday night that they were operating in Kovdan to demolish the homes of the two men but did not comment on Monday's killings. The two men shot dead on Monday are the first Palestinians to be killed by Israeli forces in the occupied West Bank this year as a result of an ongoing Israeli military campaign of intensified raids and killings for almost a year. Israeli forces conducted raids in several other cities in the occupied West Bank on Monday morning, including Nabulos Salfit and Ramallah, arresting at least 15 Palestinian men, according to prisoner groups. On Sport News, report says that the Flying Eagles will train overseas from the end of January ahead of the 2023 U-20 AFCON. The NFF are considering setting up a training camp for the Flying Eagles in either Spain or Morocco. The overseas camp is crucial because the team will hope to acclimatize outside the country as it will be freezing cold in Egypt during the under-20 AFCON. The team will reopen camp in Nigeria on January 7, during which time overseas-based professionals will join the squad to battle for team places. The under-20 AFCON will kick off February 19 in Cairo, Egypt, with Nigeria drawing against the host nation Senegal and Mozambique in the first round. And with that sports news, we conclude the news, but just remember you can follow ABS from any part of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television, Oka. 
subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television Orca. Follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can log on to our website at www.absradiotv.com. And the main news again. Governor Saludo assures on the number of accelerated development in 2023. Anambra government expresses commitment towards restoration of the state's glory. Federal government is to address post-harvest losses by farmers in Nigeria. And from the foreign scene, we brought report that Israeli forces has killed two Palestinians, injured three others in occupied West Bank, Asia. Governor Chukoma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Anambra state economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that's the news. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nonye Mokoye. Good morning and have a great day.